In today's video, I'm going to be continuing my art journey today, and I'm going to be using a new medium for me, and that is going to be watercolours. I've never used watercolours before, um, so I can't wait to give this a try, and this video is going to be all about me learning how to use watercolours, as well as that I've also brought some palettes here so I can mix my colours and uh, apply them, as well as that I've also brought some uh, watercoloured based uh, brushes what well, they said there were watercolors when i brought them so hopefully i'm not sure what this is means in difference in terms of other brushes that to me they feel like they're a little bit softer uh, but with all that we can test out these new things so the first thing i want to do while we're testing them out is i want to do a quick little dabble in there so let's get into that shall we okay so here we've got my sketchbook so i don't know exactly how good the sketchbook is going to be to do this but i want to give it a try this way i'm going to try everything in my videos where i try out a new medium and i'm going to just try it how i think i would do now there's two ways i can think of to use uh, watercolors and that is by wetting the paper first and then applying the watercolor on top and then the second one is to apply the watercolor directly since i don't know how watercolor works uh, i'm just coming in straight here and just diving into it just giving what i think a try so with this first one here of this little sketch that i've done here uh i'm just giving it a try with if we try and wet it first and then come in with a watercolor after and applying that in there so one thing that i, I did learn while doing this is this is a totally viable way to do it but uh I probably didn't want to be as heavy handed as I was with the water because what it can do is cause it to bleed and pull. Really cool if you're after those sort of effects. Uh, but if you're not and you're trying to keep it controlled like I was here for the very first time and trying to keep it really controlled, sort of paint within the lines is what I'm trying to go for is it does bleed quite a lot if you're going with the placing water on first, letting it soak into the paper. And since this isn't specialty paper, you don't know how it's going to go in terms of placing it on there and it really uh, soaking in there or warping the page and things like that so that, this is me testing out the first one and you can see i'm trying a little bit thinner in places thicker in places just trying to get a feel for how it works and with that we can try on to the second method that i could think of and that is applying it directly to the paper so now with our bottom painting complete, I'm going to try the second method that I was talking about. And this is applying the watercolor directly to the actual piece itself without wetting the page beforehand. And this way is probably a little bit more familiar to me, myself as a uh, miniature painter. Is It's a very much similar to applying uh, paint onto your miniatures or just a regularly applying paint. It does have the effect though since the watercolor is a little bit runny. And since I was mixing with water a lot, as it does bleed a little bit, so that is one thing to get used to. Of course, this can be sort of fixed and enhanced with, so I found out uh, later on, is uh, watercolor paper helps a lot of this, which is one thing with these videos where I'm trying out these new mediums, is I'm going into them completely blind. I don't know much about them. It's me trying to uh, express myself and really venture out in my sort of art journey and try all these things I've never ever tried before um I've, all I've ever done sort of my entire life is just drawing with pencil and then you may be using coloring in pencils every now and again and maybe crayons when I was a kid but nothing more than that so with doing uh, art on YouTube this is where I really want to break through and learn some of these new things and find something maybe that is really fun and exciting to me and that can be my future sort of art product go-to art product uh, in the future to really help set me off and really help me enjoy the new form of art that I've never explored before and so here they are here is my two pieces complete with the two different techniques that I could think of with doing with watercolors so what I did is I learned a lot with doing these sorts of things as well as that too also when I was doing this this is where I found out watercolor paper was an actual thing so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go out and buy some watercolor paper to use on this project for my big overall piece because we're now we've done our experiments so now it's time for me to try and do it on an actual piece and give my thoughts and really find out if i enjoy using watercolors and how i can really move forward in my art career so let's get on to the proper full scale sort of big enhanced drawing that i can do So 
so here we are getting into that drawing here and giving it that full watercolor treatment to the best of my ability and you can see i've pre-mixed some colors here onto a wet palette sort of uh let them dry i was happy with the colors came back found out about watercolor paper brought some watercolor paper came back everything had dried but that is fine one thing i did learn with uh, watercolors is that they can pretty much always be reactivated especially if they're on a, a palette like they are there you can add a bit of water to them move it around a little and it'll reactivate them in fact it seemed to be a little bit better for me too because it gave me a little bit more control one thing i definitely did learn with my uh, experiment at the start is that I was applying the watercolor so so thickly I also seen a, uh, a handful of videos on YouTube of how people are using watercolors because I seen my result and compared to what watercolor pictures I've seen online I was trying to figure out how they got that so seeing a couple of YouTube videos I don't want to go too much into it because I still want this to be my first impression but I want to just have a look around at a couple of them so I could sort of get the hang of how it's supposed to be so and the big thing I took away from it is that I was applying so much watercolor onto the piece and not having it thinned down to apply and you sort of gradually build it up so that was one thing I definitely did learn and the other thing too is that uh, I really enjoy using the watercolor and I really do like the effect it has on the watercolor paper especially that was one thing I really have Sort of fallen in love with is the texture of the watercolor paper is really neat and cool it does have this awesome texture applied to all of it so the watercolor can get in there and seep into the page but i really do like the actual texture of the water paper itself it has this really cool sort of toothy texture on it and i assume that is to let the color pull around and do its cool little things there to really help emphasize the medium that i'm using so one other thing that this art journey has uh, done for me so far that uh, I haven't done in the past is actually in terms of mixing colors. I haven't really mixed colors before in miniature painting. Uh, you totally can mix colors, uh, but in general, I don't. I have so many paints because you buy them in big sets of paints, and so I don't really mix uh, that many colors at all. And uh, one cool thing with this is because I had the constraint of the 12 colors that I purchased for watercolors in this little pack that I got from a dollar store is that it didn't have all the colors I needed so for instance it doesn't have a skin tone uh, and stuff like that so I actually had to mix colors myself to try and get them as close as I could and it really taught me some other new skills that I definitely haven't used before because uh, in miniature painting like I said you buy big sets of paints and they already come with like predetermined sort of skin tones and blues and reds all those sorts of things so they're already made out for you and since I brought them in these big sets I already have more than enough colors I needed maybe I'll add in a black or a white to make it just a little bit brighter or, or a little bit darker but I would never really go out of my way to create a skin tone or anything like that I would just use the bottles that are provided for me and that's definitely one cool thing that it has taught me just by having the restrictions of the colors myself now i totally could have easily gone out and brought a whole bunch of colors uh, such as like skin tones and things like that but uh in doing these challenges i'm doing experimenting with a whole heap of uh, stuff i've never tried before and whenever i do that i don't always buy the most expensive things and uh, art supplies are very very expensive and i saw so i brought a cheap pack and i was like if i don't like this at all i don't want to waste a whole heap of money on something that i don't like so i brought a cheap pack that gave me a good variety of colors and it really did help me out and now like that it is learning or i should say teaching me to learn to mix paints and stuff like that to get together so that's another cool thing that going on this art journey has helped me with So another thing that I've seen uh, in a couple of the YouTube videos that I watched and the people that were using watercolors is they applied the line work after 
they had done their initial watercolors so you can sort of have the versatility i guess of going with sort of like a lineless style or if you wanted to come in and punch it up with uh, line work after you can do that as well as too i found out while doing my experiments is that i uh, have drawn my little pictures beforehand and then gone over it uh, with the actual watercolors themselves and then one i had done where i had already placed on the line work in my marker here and what i had done is it had merged some in some cases it merged the colors together and just tainted them slightly black but uh that was also probably because i wasn't using uh, proper watercolor paper but also too it was placing the color over top and it was sort of giving the line work sort of a weird uh, muddy feeling that i wasn't uh, too much of a fan of so i thought going along with what the uh, seems to be the people are doing and also i want to keep the line work nice and uh, vibrant on there because i really do uh, enjoy uh, line work style in some artwork and i'm not confident enough in lineless style <laughs> yet anyway that's for sure and i also need the practice of line work itself so doing that afterwards it really does add on the pop of color and it also one thing i did notice too is it hides if there's just a little bit of bleeding or anything or you accidentally get uh, some spillover in places you don't want it to the line work can really help clean that up so one way to sort of hide your tracks if you're wanting to try watercolors uh, like i am here to really get uh, a cleaner result if you're after that sort of cleaner uh, style which is what i was trying to do here sort of like a comic booky style was what i'm trying to do with this picture and one more cool thing that i found out uh, in watching those youtube videos that i watched that a couple of them had actually put uh mask well i don't know if it exactly was masking tape but masking tape around the edges of their uh, watercolor paintings and doing that the watercolor doesn't actually seep through the paper it stops right where the tape does and it gives you a very clean uh, sort of finished result on the actual piece and i really did like the idea of that i've never tried anything like that before giving it like a, a border and that sort of style and i thought that was be fun to try i had some masking tape uh, near my work desk so i thought i'd give it a try so as I've done here, I've made it like a little strip across here, and I made it so it's actually popping out of this colored strip. So I wanted to just tape off the top and the bottom to give this technique a try. I thought, while well, I'm already experimenting here, okay, this may be my sort of final piece to try and culminate to using all these experiments. I thought, well, if it doesn't work, I can always quickly go in and go in with our background color and just really do the whole page anyway. So for what not what was there to lose give that a try and as you can see also too i went with a bigger brush here and it has mixed results i like i said i'm new to the medium so working out the differences and size of brush and consistency of your watercolor as well as the water content in the water really does make a huge difference in the way the result works out uh, in the end really something that uh, i definitely got to give credit to watercolor artists that who know all these sorts of things and can really make the different look of a piece just by adding in different amounts of water and using a different brush is really really cool and hopefully i will get to learn a little bit of that over my time because i really must say i really do enjoy the result and the look of uh, the watercolor paintings and as we come to the finish here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into some glamour shots and we can see how the piece finally came out with like in the end and see the results and hopefully you give you something to enjoy and look at and maybe you will want to try some watercolor in the future too And with all that complete, there you have it. There is my first dive and experiment with watercolor paintings. I hope this has been fun and interesting for you and following me on my art journey here as I try to improve myself. Thank you all for watching and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.